it, it just flows. And by the time it's flowed and left the lips, it never returns. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we shall be doing an unboxing and first impression review of the Saturn IV Ultra Series 16K model. Stay tuned. We have lots of bubbly packaging. So I will decipher which is the top and which is the bottom so I know which way to orientate it as I lift. <laughs> like so. Would you look at that? We have a box. I don't know what's in the box. No doubt we will find out. Power. Power. A destruction manual. And a machine. We would have a tie at the bottom of the bag, wouldn't we? And it is one of those twisty ties. I remove the bag. Let's get rid of some of the packaging. And see what is in the box. The box contains a bib. An Eligugi bib. Now, I have a power cable. I'm assuming the power supply must be inside. So, a fold up lid and lots more foam. Carefully, we have the box marked toolkit, which contains tools, gloves, power supply, filters, scraper, USB, plastic scraper, masks. So, I'll pop those back in there, continue with this exploration. <laughs> we have a plate, laser etched Elegoo logo in. So, this aids for your adhesion. Big chunky piece of foam because this has a tilting vat. Please read the user manual carefully before using this product. While using, please take precautions to prevent pressure on the LCD screen or resin infiltration. In other words, do not spill resin on the screen because the resin will then infiltrate the screen. Game over. Any damages resulting from mishandling of the screen will not be covered under warranty. Very, very important to take that into consideration. The fundamental working part of any resin printer is the screen. It is very, very susceptible to damage from resin, spillages, IPA, any other nasty liquids. You do not want those contacting your screen. That is why Elegoo can give you a bib. So the idea with the bib is, you pop that over there, you fill the vat with resin, any spillage is caught in the bib. So that is that. I am, at this point, going to consult the manual. Just like the kind label in the bottom of the vat says I should do. The vat is actually secured into place with a couple of screws. And I do believe that those screws that the vat is currently held in place with are transport screws and not the screws that you secure the vat with. But I just want to clarify this before I proceed to remove them. But needless to say, Elegoo do not want to tell me. So I shall take it upon myself to remove the screws. So in this bag, I have already foreseen two screws to secure the vat. And we have a selection of spare screws and some Allen keys. So we shall pop out those, which to be fair, aren't even tight. We should then be able to lift the vat, peel off the protector like so. We have got raised stunts on this, so you you can leave it on a table without the fear of scratching or damaging your fat. Then on the screen, we have another peely peely sticker. So please peel off. That's not going to make this very easy for me because the label is actually stuck. There we go. Now I did actually think that was a screen protector, but it is not. So first looks at this is there is no, there is no screen protector on the screen, nor is there a screen protector supplied with the machine. So just snug them down. You don't want to crank them up, over tighten them or anything like that. Wouldn't You could end up stripping out the threads. So these screws that have come out of the vat, I shall pop them in the bag. The Allen key, refer back to the manual. Now it doesn't say if the machine is pre-leveled or not. So like any other resin review that I do, I don't level the screen, but level, level the build plate to the screen. So slide it on, lock the camera lever down, and I am going to jump straight in, put in some power. I'm not going to check it's leveled. I do believe that this is a very smart machine, or a claim to be. I think it would be good to test that theory. So in the side of the machine, very nice to see it in the side, not on the back. Power port. Also on the side of the machine, the on and off switch. So it should now be on. It is. We have an Elegoo sign, Saturn IV Ultra 16K. So we'll let it just boot up. And we have select language. We are English. No Wi-Fi is detected. That is okay. We shall skip device name. We can name it. It is named currently 3D printer. So I shall leave as that. 
device self-test. It is beginning to check a whole host of things. I will read them off. The mechanical sensor is being calibrated. Do not touch. So the first thing that's checked already is the status of the LCD screen connection. Check. LED status. Check. Resin tank status. Check. X-axis motor status. Check. We have already done all the checks. So I guess on that fine note, that is it. We are set up. So let me have a look and see what we have on the, on the stick. So USB files. Let's have a look. We have the Elegoo Rook, which is a GU file format. There is no other files on there. So we'll go back. So some Elegoo standard gray. We shall give it a shake. Extremely important to shake your resin. Make sure it is well and truly agitated. You want it really well mixed because resin can settle. Now we've got a minimum maximum mark on the back. Very, very clearly marked. And it says do not fill above maximum. I'm just going to literally for the purposes of this test. Fill it to the minimum line. And that will do. Also at the back we have an AI camera with a lens cover on. So I am going to remove that lens cover. We have a little LED light in the corner as well. And I take it that will be to illuminate the area for the AI camera. Remove the cellophane. Close the lid and press Rook. And we've got delete, copy and the big button of print. So we're going to print. Transfer in the file and away we go. We've got a little light flashing on the UI saying it's recording. So I don't know if it even does time lapse even. I don't know. But the VAT is currently moving about. It gave me the thing that the mechanical sensor is being calibrated again. The build plate is now proceeding to go down. It states that the current state of resin temperature is 14 degrees. And according to this, it wants to heat it to 30 degrees. What else can I tell you from this? Yeah, changing automatic detection for resin in the VAT. So it's got automatic detection for resin it's giving me an exposure time normal layers are going to be burned in at 2.5 seconds the initial bottom layers will be 32 seconds and the model should be 50 millimeters tall just popped on now to say heating the resin tank please wait so we will leave this magical machine to do its thing and we will be back shortly printing in progress stand by So, the Rook is done with its own itty bitty bitty tiny tiny spirally staircase for the itty bitty tiny people. There you go. I suspect the Rook. So, before I remove this, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to place the bib on the machine. Well, it's not a very easy venture. I think that's it. Basically, the reason for that is I don't want resin creeping off here, finding its way down the gap between the vat and the screen because that would not be good. Grab some blue roll. Doesn't have to be blue roll. Any kind of paper towel will do the same job. The one thing that puts me off of this plate design is the way that we've got resin pooling up on top between the two plates on these legs. It looks like it could be very messy. We don't like mess. So I shall. The rock is very well stuck. There we go. Wow. It was very, very clearly bonded to that build plate. Excessively, in fact. So that would indicate to me yeah, the exposure time for this resin is lower than 2.5 seconds. Right, let's think it had a burn layer of 30 seconds for the initial layers. So that wants lowering. But we will get around to that. So I shall take off my gloves. Remove the Elegoo lid. I have got some bits and pieces in the washer. They're just funnel scraper. Little bits that I've washed previously for another project. So I shall grab a rook and drop them in there. Pop on the lid and we will wash him for four minutes. Beautiful. Be back soon. Well, so I'm wrestling with the lid for the washer. I shall remove the, the rook from the solution of isopropanol alcohol. Give it a shake off, get off the excess and drop it on my paper towel. Secure the lid because we don't want any accidents. Yeah, IPA on your gloves. Don't touch because it will eat into the, the plastic and destroy it. So we shall pop this out the way and replace it with the turntable. Try and get most of the, should really let it dry fully. We'll cure him for four minutes as well. Looks very lonely. While this does its thing, I guess we'll do a bit of a rundown. 
I will go over some key stats. I am reading from the manual, so please excuse me. We have a build volume of 211 millimeters by 118 millimeters by 220 millimeters high. So basically, this way we've got 211. Front to back, we've got 118. Back to the top, 220 millimeters. With a bit of reading and whatever else, the AI camera that is situated right in the corner there also produces time lapse photography. The time lapses do not start to record until your model print reaches a height of 30 millimeters. And then once it passes 100 millimeters, it will then start to detect any anomalies in the print, whether it be bits falling off the build plate, warps, whatever. It claims to do that. And it also states in the manual that the more prints it watches and learns from, the more accurate and proficient it will become. Time will tell. In the actual machine itself, we've got a very, very solid, beefy, dual linear rail set up. So the, the actual Z carriage is fixed to two independent linear blocks that slide up and down on rails, driven by a lead screw. A lot more manufacturers are adopting this same principle. Cam lock for the build plate. So it makes one-handed operation a lot simpler, easier, thus keeping the job cleaner. We have the bib. Now, I would highly recommend you use the bib when filling your vat and also when removing the plate because this resin here can very, very easily drip straight down between the vat and the screen, like I mentioned earlier. You don't want that to happen. The tilting vat is not by any means a new thing. We have seen this technology before on other machines, i.e. the Prusa SLA printer. They use a very, very similar system. The actual function of the tilting vat is to basically peel the print away from the FEP film, making the releasing easier, less suction, less force, less failed prints, faster print time. Downside is, if you overfill and the vat tilts, your resin goes swoosh like a tsunami wave straight over the vat down inside the machine the machine is then kapish so it's very very important to only ever fill to the maximum fill line critical the ui is nice we have color we have different color we have nice graphics we have nice pretty little icons it gives you quite a lot of information on the ui like the the vat temperature what it's heating to um let's have a look in tools so we have lcd exposure we've got manual move the z up and down we've got the tank clean and we have a, an emergency stop button we also have wi-fi which is built in so there's no external antenna for this machine you literally connect it straight to your wi-fi network and we have the system info in settings we've got language wi-fi app settings accessible features what is in there so accessible features we have lighting so we can turn the, the little light in the corner on and off we can turn the sound on and off. We can turn the tank heating on and off. We can turn the resin preheater on or off. So we go back and now we're back to the main print, tools, settings, device info. The screen's nice, compact, not too big, not too small, easy to read, very responsive to the touch. The fact that they've done the fold up lid like the other models is handy, one handed operation. You can quite easily lift it one handed and it will swing right the way back. It'll even sit half upright there's a bit of friction to the actual pivot point so it doesn't just drop down and go kabash which you wouldn't want that so this appears to be metal and plastic the sides sorry are metal the front face plate is like a plastic it's quite a weighty machine so that would indicate this there is a decent amount of components inside the machine giving it thus weight so let's check out the rook so this was printed literally on the default slicer settings and again we have perfect formation of the little steps we have the three dimensions printed in three dimensions text around the top of the rook we have the little dna spiral straight up the center perfectly formed and then we have this text around the outside elegu satin 4 ultra 16k with a hole that goes sweeping through into the inside as you'd expect it to everything is present and correct and very well formed so my conclusion from this success we will proceed to slice some more files print those out and they shall appear on screen anytime now we will be using lighter slicer to slice the files and these are in GU format i will slice them at a standard layer height i'm not going to go super fine this machine is capable of printing super fine but we'll try it out on the 
0.05 standard default. And we will print it again with the Elegoo standard grey. As some of you will be aware, there is already a Saturn IV Ultra 12K version. This is the upgraded 16K version. So effectively, higher resolution screen, more pixels, more detail. So don't confuse this with the other model. We will do a full review, a long-term review on this machine. So we'll put it through its paces. We'll run a series of prints through it to make sure that it remains consistent and reliable and continues to produce exceptionally good quality prints. So stay tuned for that video. If you haven't already checked out our review for the Elegoo Wash and Cure, please see the link in the description so you can check out that unit. Both make an ideal companion in pair. And if you would like information on either of these products or any other products, please check out the website. The link for that will be in the description. And should you have any questions or you would like to leave us any comments, please drop them in the little box below. Thank you very much. So on that fine note, I do believe that concludes this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and if you really want to, share. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores. Thank you.